Hey guys, I'm back with a new video. In this video, let us learn about types of networks, their strengths and their use cases. So the first network is a centralized network. The second one is decentralized and the third one is distributed. So let us first go over the centralized network. So in a centralized network, everything connects to a central network owner. So this owner can be a company, a person or even a database. And there is only a single source of truth that holds the entire information of the system. So it's a centralized system. So you can see this is our central entity and to this various nodes are connected, right? So if this central entity goes down, the entire network will collapse. So the information in this case is completely centralized. So it can be extremely effective and it's a very common way of sharing the information. But what if our central entity gets destroyed? So in this case, as I just mentioned, we will lose everything, right? In a completely centralized system, we will not have any way to recover the information once the central node of operation goes down. So if this collapses, then the entire network will collapse, right? So other possible issue could be speed which means that to get some information you would need to get all the way to this central entity no matter how far the particular node is from this central entity make sense so to help address these concerns other types of networks have been created and one of them is called as the decentralized network so next let us see the decentralized network now in a decentralized network, there is no longer a single point where all the information exists. Instead, the information is spread across multiple locations. So instead of holding the information in a single central entity, we have many nodes where we have the information available. So duplicates of some information could exist in each node. Now if the central entity or some master node goes down, we would definitely lose some of the resources but definitely we do not lose all the information we still have a backup of information in other locations next let us move forward and understand about the distributed blockchain network now blockchain is distributed because that simply is the best type of network so it is distributed specifically because it is trying to avoid being centralized so we avoid the problems that we see in centralizing the information in favor of the benefits that we see in the distributed network. So a distributed system is a decentralized system pushed to its further limits. So a distributed network is also a decentralized network. In a distributed network, everyone gets the copy of the information with the same access and control as anyone else. There is no centralization of the information at all. This gives everyone equal access to whatever information they need. So this gives us a network where everyone has quick and efficient access to all the information that exists. So this is the idea behind the distributed network. So blockchain is a distributed network, but how does it give everyone the ownership of their information? So here everyone downloads a copy of the blockchain into their local computers they interact with this copy of the blockchain and they have full access to all the information that it contains so now we don't need to go to the central entity to find the information but we can simply access the information on our own node so with everyone having access to the information we don't need any central authority like a bank to track that information for us. So this distributed system is one way the blockchain is trying to bypass the need for the external third parties. So that is how the blockchain operates as a distributed peer-to-peer -peer network. It allows everyone to interact freely with anyone over the network and it gives everyone the full access to the transaction histories held on the blockchain. So this was all I wanted to cover about the distributed and peer-to-peer -peer network. So let's catch up in the next video.